dangerous, sturdy, underestimated. These are the words that come to mind when we think of hippopotami. And today we're not going to be studying the animal, but we will also see that the chess opening, the hippopotamus defense, can be all of those things and more. Join me as we venture onto the African plains. Yes, today we're going to be learning the hippopotamus defense. And three cool things about the hippo before we jump into the actual moves. Number one being you can play it as either white or black with minimal adjustments. So no matter what pieces you're drawn, get ready to draw up a hippo. Number two is that it is a system opening, which pretty much means no matter what your opponent does, you can still just set up your hippo in peace and let them get their pieces out. And number three is it's actually solid. Unlike some of the openings we cover on this channel, which are more offbeat, the hippo has been played by grandmasters and to very good effect. There is deep theory, which we won't go into today, but just know that it's a viable opening. Okay, so how do you actually construct this fabled hippo? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to move your B, your D, your E, and your G pawns up one rank to the third or the sixth rank if you're playing as black. You're also going to fianchetto both of your bishops, so put them in those nice long diagonals on the corner of the board. And you're going to pop your knights in the center here on d2 and e2 or d7 and e7 respectively. Now, what that actually looks like on the board, let's just draw it up real quick. And as I said, it's a system opening, so you can kind of do this in any order. Um, within reason, and I think the reason is do it in any order. Um, I like to start with the fianchetto bits, just in case they get a little sloppy and they don't cover off these pawns. Like for example, if they had played f6 instead of c6 here, then they actually would have just, just dropped that pawn and we could just drop our bishop back whenever we got the chance to. They didn't do it in this fake game, so let's carry on. After that, you can play either of your central pawns out. So d3, let's do another move for black here, and e3, and let's say they do something like this for example and we'll just complete our lovely lovely little hippo here now as you see one of the drawbacks of the hippo is that you give your opponent plenty of time to develop as well it's not really a fast opening and it's not supposed to be what you're really looking to do with the hippo is wait for your opponent to slip up the hippo is first and foremost a counter-attacking opening and what that means really is you're kind of waiting for your opponent to start venturing into your territory, which is not an easy thing to do. And once they do, you can start to eye up some holes in their position. So for example, if they push one of their central pawns, that pawn is going to not defend two of these squares, which can then form a really nice home for this knight and will invariably open up either of your bishops. If they push their D pawn, your light square bishop, gets very very active if they push their uh, e-pawn exact same on the other side your dark square bishop gets very very active and this knight can end up having quite a nice home there on d4 alternatively if they go for something like a flank attack whereby let's say for example they go around here like b or a a5 um in general almost a kind of like advanced hippo or girthy hippo i think is what we'll start calling it now um if they start going for a flank attack you can actually even meet that with something like a3 oftentimes you'll also see h3 played if this pawn starts to advance and the reason being is if they start to push here rather than kind of take here and let this rook start running amok a little bit and um, you can do something like this you can start to put a little bit of pressure on this bishop make that move and even follow that up with something like c4 and all of a sudden while your king side is incredibly sturdy your queen side has actually gotten pretty dynamic um from that kind of closed hard to crack nut of the hippo so that is in general the theory you want to just set it up you can also as i say include if they start to come at you on the wings do something like this i've often kind of castled as well it you don't have to again you're kind of pretty solid across the board castling short the computer seems to like it in the analyses i've done so i would trust them more than i but in general it's not a huge necessity to castle 
that's probably enough of the theory. Let's jump into a game and see what this looks like live in action. As always here at Chess Please, we want to take the opening we've just learned for a test drive. And I'm going to do that in the bullet arena of chess.com. So time is very much of the essence. We are the black pieces. Not that it mattered. We're going to do a hippo either way. We're going to fianchetto again. Let's see. Okay, no, they, they did the right thing. But that's okay. We'll fianchetto kingside as well. Block out that bishop while we're at it. And we'll get ready to complete our hippopotamus preparation. Now where do we want to activate the girthy? I don't think we do want to activate the girthy. This bishop might get driven out here. I think we should have played this a little further. Now that this battery set up, I'm not so I'm not so chuffed with it. Um, but maybe, 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 maybe now. Yeah, maybe now is fine. We don't want to castle anymore, though. That's fine. Girthatron must be played over here as well. Yep. Activation. I think we can even push. I think we can even push. And then we can do something like this. Oh, and just block that bishop out forever. Time. Again, time is always a factor, Andrew. Um, okay. Okay. Well, maybe we will castle now. Maybe we won't, though. Let's do this. And... Mm, mm, mm. Alright, I'm just going to go all out attack for the time that remains. All out attack. Hmm. What happens if I take here? Take with the queen. Yes. Oh, my rook! I hate losing my rook. This is a pet peeve of mine. And this pawn too. The rook mainly. All right, let's just set up a cheap trick and see if we can't win this one. This time is still a thing. Much as I don't want it to be. That's okay. We've got mate and one unless they see it. They have to think about it. They have to think about it. They didn't think about it enough. And we've got mate and one. <laughs> Alright. Well that's bullet chess. It's the hippo in a way in a sense i think we built a full hippo there we came under some pressure and we got away with it that probably wasn't an accurate hippo but there's no such thing as a perfect hippo there's your hippo and play it however you like have fun with chess and like and subscribe if you'd like to all the best bye bye.